Today we're down here in Virginia. We're at the Virginia Zoo meeting up with my friend Dennis. We're gonna be having a good time. I tell you what, this place is cool. Never been here and you guys know that I love zoos. So what do you say we go in and have a great time? And guys, I knew that we we're gonna see some really cool reptiles here, but I didn't realize we we're gonna see this giant snake right here. That's right, we made it guys. The biggest snake in the world. Well, okay. Maybe it's not real, but hey, it's pretty darn cool. Here we're at the reptile exhibit, which is the place that I'm gonna be at for sure. There's no doubt about it. First snake I see him come in, of course, is my favorite, the King Cobra. I mean, wow, what an absolute beauty. Love this place. I mean, it really is cool. So I'm excited to see what else we're gonna see while we're here. This is a real pleasure. Tell me a bunch about this because I don't know much about this. This is certainly gonna be the only time probably in my life that I'm gonna handle this type of animal. Wow, it's incredible. This is a great monitor they're a philippine lizard fruit eating monitor so they eat a lot of pandanus fruit like we offer her different figs we've actually just started offering rapashi which seems to be actually better for her wow. we do papaya but she also eats rodents and eats worms and so we just kind of vary it up she does fruit fruit once a week she does bugs once a week or twice a week and then a, one mouse a week isn't that but, crazy to think that a monitor is that like one of its big diets is fruit I mean, it's crazy. And this is like an animal that, again, I've heard about forever. I've never seen one in person and certainly haven't held one. So this is this is unbelievable, guys. Yeah, and this is an adult female. The adult males are also called banjo lizards because they're so big and they look right. like banjos. They, have, right. they look like almost like water monitor size. Right. But for a lizard, if you feel it, you can see it's got a real prehensile tail. Like it's made to be in the trees. And if you ever watch videos, you can find videos, they jump onto these pandanus fruit groups. Right. Of like, it's almost like clusters of grapes with Parker and they just kind of like grab it. They're super, just super agile, just a really neat animal, but really reactive and really kind of crazy in some ways, yeah. but really pretty and really different. Oh my gosh, I am in love, man. I tell you what, guys, this is uh, this has been a dream day for sure, man. I, I am loving it, but this is one of the rarest lizards that I'll probably be out there holding in my entire life. I love these small woods of Anolis. You know, I've always said that the Anoles, the Anolis genus, is one of the those most underrated things. You know, you've got the Cuban night Anoles, you've got the Carolinensis, but you have tons of other ones. Look at how beautiful these guys are. I mean, there are dozens of species of Anolis that are incredible, and people really don't really follow them. Well, I think that they're absolutely incredible. Look at how cool those things are. And this is my buddy Dennis. Thank you so much for having us here. It's amazing. And, and you're saying this is one of your favorite snakes here. Yeah, this is probably my favorite snake that we have in the whole place. Oh my gosh. This is, of course, an annulated boa. You guys see like the Amazon tree boas, Cook's tree boas. This is like a very similar animal to this. But of course, it's, they get a little bit bigger, typically very much more docile. As you can see, this animal is puppy dog tame. That thing is incredible. And you have a couple of these? We have here probably like six of these. Six of them. So wow. we have we have three females over there, a male and two babies. Oh my god! And that you produce the babies? Mm -hmm. Oh my god! That is so incredible. Just look at it. Almost looks like a Brazilian rainbow boa, but in a, an Amazon tree boa body. What incredible animal it is! And they change color. Yeah. So yeah. you'll come in sometimes, and she'll be like a really light orange, and then you'll come in other times, she'll be almost like brownish. It's exactly. weird how they can do that. Yeah, it's almost like a again they do the firing up and firing down, much like crested geckos and stuff like that, which is crazy. But she is definitely fired up right now. It looks beautiful. One of the things I love about some AZA zoos, including this one, is that they cohabitate some things. So what basically you have is you have Amazon Basin Emerald Tree Bows, the annulated bows, and then down here you actually have Dendrobatia rotis, which is actually the, the poison dart frogs. And it's just cool to see those different layers, right? You've got the frogs down below, annulated bows. We know that the Amazon Basin Emeralds don't typically move much. So, you know, you have the movement with the frogs down below, and then you have this cool display animals up above. It's something that I really want to maybe one day incorporate into the Reptarium for sure. It's cool, we actually have like a little nursery here that's on exhibit that's, I really love this type thing. You got all the little babies and stuff like that. I think we're gonna get a chance to actually see some little baby Shinosaurus, which are really cool crocodile skinks from, from China. Absolutely amazing. Obviously a giant kind of cement snake we saw outside. You guys know it wasn't real, we know that obviously. But this Ethiopian mountain viper is actually similarly related to it, which is just absolutely amazing. Again, you know, the rhino vipers, you know, gaboon vipers. They all have that similar look, absolutely stunning. And the Ethiopians are something that you don't see very often. A lot of rhinos and gaboons, obviously, but these guys you don't see too often. So it's just an absolute ripper of a snake. You guys know that I always talk about mango getting bigger. Well, this is how large the caiman lizards actually get. And you notice, again, a very aquatic, 
type of thing. These guys like water, but they also like to climb. So when you're setting up an enclosure, like I had mentioned, this will eventually go into salt and peppers enclosure. But the difference is, is we'll put all of these kind of branches in there. That way they can get up, they can bass, just like these guys are right here, but also have the water down below to get in because they are aquatic lizards as well. But uh, it just gives you an idea of the size that mango one day will get. Back at you guys with HelloFresh, my friends over there. We're actually gonna be making pan pork stir fry tacos. That sounds absolutely amazing. And listen, are you sick of those New Year's resolutions? You know, you're trying to lose weight, you're trying to do whatever. Do things differently and regain your food choices with HelloFresh. HelloFresh has so many amazing recipes to get you out of your recipe rut. Not to mention, I don't know about you guys, but I'm a busy person, right? So you've got a ton of really quick and easy recipes that can take less than 20 minutes. Super easy food prep and easy cleanup. And if you love the environment like I do, the pre-portioned ingredients means that there's less waste, which means that's better for the environment. So today, what do you say we get ready with some pork tacos and make them up? Mm -mm, I love some HelloFresh. With Calorie Smart and Carb Smart recipes, you can indulge in delicious meals without the worries. HelloFresh has more five-star reviews than any other meal kit, so you know you'll get something delicious. You can increase your HelloFresh box serving so that you can easily use leftovers for lunches later. The packaging HelloFresh uses to ship your food in is already recycled content. And HelloFresh cuts down on food waste by 25% compared to grocery shopping. Go to HelloFresh.com, use my promo code BRIANB16 for up to 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. Then of course my favorite part of this whole thing Oh my gosh, wow, that's like a flavor bomb, man. Ooh, doggy, that thing is good. So make sure to go over to HelloFresh.com, use my promo code BRIANB16, and you can get up to 16 free meals plus three surprise gifts. The Rhode Island snake neck turtles that are in here are effectively extinct in the wild. So they are, babies of these guys will end up being sent to the Bronx, they'll probably raise them for a while and then they'll re-release them. That's awesome. That's one of the programs they're working on. That's great. I couldn't be more impressed with just the exhibits at this zoo. It's just amazing. At least the reptile houses phenomenal and this one is one that I would literally live in this is the Siamese crocodile exhibit and wow just look at the size that that has it obviously has land has nice deep water the viewing is incredible I mean plants hanging from the ceiling I mean wow this is a this is this is a dream that one day I hope will come to reality in my place because this is this is phenomenal. So you guys don't understand what a special moment this is. I mean, a Fiji Island iguana. You guys know I love iguanas, but these are really special because there are no private people that own Fiji iguanas in America. You can own them in Europe and you can own them in Canada, believe it or not, but in the United States, it's illegal to actually have them in captivity if you're not an AZA zoo. So the fact that we're able to actually interact with a Fiji Island iguana, I mean, this is like, pinnacle animal. I mean, one day I pray just as much as I want to get a Komodo dragon, I want to get Fiji Island iguanas. So, I mean, just look at the color and pattern of these things. I mean, un freaking believable. And uh, I'm in heaven right now, guys. I mean, I've got a Fiji Island iguana in my hands right now. How freaking awesome is that? Oh my God, those are so dope, man. How old are these? These are little uh, African emperor yeah. scorpions. They're like three months old. Three months old. Mm. Yeah, now you can't get them. So, I mean, they're, they're, it's amazing that you guys are breeding them. Yeah, so we keep them in a colony group of, we started out with 3.3. Last year, we let them just take care of the babies themselves. Uh -huh. And then we found that our success rate was probably, we probably only produced about 17 babies okay. total out of the three females. And this year, we took the female that was gravid, put her in here, and we got 12 out of her on her own. Two-year-old bog turtle? Two-year-old bog turtle. If you see their head come out, it's the smallest turtle in North America. Right. I wish your head would stick out because they have these bright yellow flashes behind their ears that are really cool with them. Beautiful turtle though. Take a look at this cute little thing here. This of course is the little crocodile skink. This is the Shinosaurus. Absolutely amazing. So you guys have been breeding these for a bit? Yeah, we actually produced their his uh, father as well as- Oh, well, so this, this is, is our second, second generation. Third. Yeah, this is like our third litter. Oh, so that's beautiful. Unbelievable, just really cool animals. I mean, they're really something interesting. So it's nice. So they used to be very common in the pet trade. Now you hardly ever see them. So it's really cool that zoos like this are doing a lot of stuff for the conservation effort for sure. This is cool. Look that how cool. Too, because you have like boys have wow. a lot more color. Look at the boys color there. And yeah, they're little feisty monkeys. There's yeah. no doubt about it. And you definitely, when you do get bit by these guys, they love to hang on and not let go. So we'll try not to let anyone get bit. But wow, that was a beautiful Shinosaurus. 
Oh my gosh, look at this little base in here. Unbelievable. So this came from that big exhibit we saw yep. out there, right? Yep. Oh my goodness gracious. And there's this older sister up there. Oh gosh. Whew. I tell you what, Amazon base and emeralds, you can't get much better than that. I mean, I fell in love with emerald tree bows when I was a kid. That was before people talked about Amazon basins. Really, when you saw an Amazon basin back then, and I'm sure you remember this, it was just considered like a high weight emerald tree bow. It wasn't until a long time later that they realized that it's actually a locality and completely different. But wow, this is beautiful, dude. Yeah, scientific name's different than everything. Yeah, exactly, it's crazy. Look at this little Jamaican boa right here. Unbelievable, wow. Again, another one of those animals that you just don't see all a lot, you know, and I just love them to death. Wow. Now, what's the genus on these? They used to be epicrates, right? Chilobothus. Yeah, Chilobothus, exactly, yeah. So a lot of the uh, the tree bows, like the, you know, Brazilians and, and Jamaicans and Cubans and stuff like that, used to all be in the same genus. So it's, uh, wow, just crazy cool. It's just cool to be handling stuff like this that you really just never see. And then this is one of the babies of the annulated bows. You saw that the difference between that, like, nice, beautiful orange colored animal, and then this is just kind of a more grayish animal, but still absolutely lovely so this is what about a year old that's almost two almost two years old wow tell you what annulated boas are next level i mean they're super cool something i definitely want to add there's no doubt about it because i love the amazon tree bows but you know that they get a little bit feisty and stuff like that these guys are just so much more chill and so much more bigger the tree bows are pretty much the largest of the dart frog they also are the most toxic hence their name they say that the skin of one of those frogs can kill 10 adult men in the wild really yeah, and so we have gold ones as well as the green one, but the gold ones are pretty spectacular. The gold ones are amazing. Oh my gosh, they're, look at those. They're like metallic gold. It gets wow. crazy to see the difference in them. But, wow. but yeah, they're they're both pretty fantastic. And they're probably the best of the dart frogs to show them yeah. and Aratus just because they're always out. Yeah, right. Like yeah. they really could care less about anything else. Yeah. They're just always out hanging out. It's so pretty cool that you also have uh, four different species of the tree monitors, right? Right. So you have, which, which ones? Blacks, greens, blues, and yellows. Yep. And that's awesome. You've had success with breeding these at all? Or? We get eggs out of the greens, but they like to eat their own eggs before right. they even get out of the nest box. <laughs> really? So we've not actually, we have a pair of blacks, but the male black we have is a little bit too much for the girl. Okay. So we have them together, then we separate them. The blues we have seem to get along really well, but we've not had any breeding activity for them gotcha. yet. It's just cool to see all of those four kind of on exhibit right next to each other. Yeah. No you, know, you can go from like cage to cage to cage to cage. It's really cool. So again, a wild, wild exhibit. So that wraps up the reptile house here. We're going to go check on some giant tortoises. Just kind of walking around zoos always makes me happy. I, I could spend every day of my life at a zoo. I'm not going to lie to you. I just love it. I love the big African porcupines, which are absolutely incredible. I mean, look at how big that porcupine is. And uh, I've got a couple quills of these guys in my office, as a matter of fact. And, and they're usually relatively chill, to be totally honest with you. A lot of people think that porcupines throw their quills and they'll actually shoot them at it. It's not the case at all. What these guys will do when they're mad is they'll puff up their quills and they'll actually back up into you and they'll actually stick them with you. And that's how you get stuck with quills. So, uh, But typically, these guys are pretty chill. As long as you don't find them in the wild, then it's a different story. But in zoos, they're usually pretty good to work with. And <laughs> take a look at this monster right here. Unbelievable. This is over 500 pounds, about 88 years old. Uh, this is the biggest of their Aldalba tortoises. They have a bunch of females over here, a couple males also. But this little monkey here, I just cannot wait until Matilda gets giant. You know what I mean? She's already big. She's as big as most of these guys over here. But uh, I tell you what, this is just absolutely incredible. It's always just, it's very humbling to me whenever you're around an animal this size and, and an animal that can literally live 200, 250 years. So again, the longest living land animal in the world. I mean, it's just, it's unreal to me that for hundreds of millions of years, these animals have been around. And it's just, again, if you're not humbled sitting next to something like this, there's something that's wrong with you because that is one absolutely amazing experience. Look at the size of its head. Just think what this animal will have seen when it gets to an old age. Absolutely incredible. Hey, might be on Mars with Elon Musk. What an absolutely amazing day at the zoo. I tell you what, I love zoos so much. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I think we have one more day down here before we actually head back home. Uh, so who knows what tomorrow will bring. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, hit this playlist right over here. Another favor you could do for me is hit that subscription button. It would mean the world to me. Have an absolutely wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you in the next one.